Now let's uh, move on. Uh, here in the PL, we have the verb halal. Halal means to praise, to praise in the PL. And uh, you'll recognize this verb, I think. Uh, some characters in the, uh, the time of Jesus, uh, Hillel, uh, he was a rabbi, uh, named, a name, you know, is uh, based on, on this verb form. And, uh, and you'll see some other uh, interesting things here in just a moment. But uh, here's the deal with the PL of, of uh, geminate verbs. When they follow the normal PL pattern, they are very regular. So you don't see this monosyllabicizing going on. Uh, there are some other patterns that the geminate verbs follow when they want to form a PL. They, 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 uh, they will also often follow um, a, a minor stem pattern, which we'll learn about later, called the, the poel and the polel. But, uh, but we won't worry about that right now. Uh, here's what uh, halal looks like. So hillel in the, in the PL perfect, uh, he praised. Hillala, she praised. Hilalta, you praised. Hillelu, they praised. This is all very normal pointing for the PL perfect pattern. So that's good. The imperfect, that's all very normal as well. Yahalel, he will praise. Yahalalu, they will praise. To halelna, um, they or you, feminine plural, will praise. Uh, notice uh, that the um, Doubling dot is in root two in all these situations because PL is characterized by doubling in root two. Uh, look at the imperative. The imperative is the imperfect with the prefix head chopped off. Yehalel becomes halel. So I'm commanding one man to praise. Halalu. There I'm commanding a group of people to praise. So if I add ya to the end of this, it's hallelujah. That means praise ya, praise the Lord. And then halelna, halelna. Uh, is a command to a group of women to praise. The participle, mahalel, and mahalala. So there's uh, typical patterns. The infinitive construct and absolute are also quite normal. Halel for the construct and halol for the absolute. Uh, all three verbal roots are here in all the forms. Uh, we don't see any simplifying of those into monosyllabic cores or anything like that. So, um, the PL is very normal. Let's take a look at the HIFIL of Savav. Uh, with the HIFIL, I will have my characteristic uh, in the perfect, the HIFIL HEY. Okay, and what vowel class does the HIFIL perfect usually have under the HEY? It's got an I class vowel. Uh, but normally the I class vowel is short. If you remember the strong verb PACAD, it's HIFKID. HIFKID. Uh, but because this is open and long, I need a long I-class vowel, and sere is the long I-class vowel. So I will see the right vowel class, but just a slightly longer vowel there. It's a tone long I. And then the hifl perfect should have a kyric yod, right? Hif keyed, kyric yod. But in the geminate verbs, I will see this monosyllabicizing effect, and it will get a sere here. So this is different. You need to pay attention to that. To that. It's still an I-class vowel, but it's not the historically long I-class vowel, the Kyrick Yod, but the Sere. Okay? So, hey, save. Hey, save. When I add the comment, say, for third feminine singular, hey, seba. Hey, seba. Notice that nothing's changing here except that I'm adding a dogish forte there, and I'm uh, leaving the, the stress on the samic here, the root one. Hey, seba. When I want to add a consonantal ending, Hey, Seba, right? I would have had a Sere here. Hey, I would have had a Sere here. But with that Dagesh Forte dropping in and the stress moving to the bet, this syllable becomes closed and unaccented. The Sere cannot be here. I have to uh, put a short vowel here. Sere is an I class long vowel and it becomes a short I vowel, which is the Kyrick. And then this becomes open and Propertonic, and so my sere reduces to a vocal shiva. Why don't I have a normal vocal shiva here? It's because he is a part of the guts gang. Gutturals don't take vocal shivas, they take compound shivas instead, 
And usually we're looking for an A-class one because gutturals prefer A-class vowels. All right. For the third common plural, it's hey sebu. So hey save, add the shurik, hey sebu, hey sebu, and that dogish forte is dropped in there, okay? So if I were asking you to parse this, it would be challenging. But if you can recognize the hey as the hifil hey, then you've got root one, and you've got a bet with the dagesh, so that's roots two and three. So you would suppose that this would be savav. The shurik tells you that uh, it could be third common plural if it's perfect. It could be second common plural if it is a, a an imperative. Okay, but the hey with the i class tells you it's a hifil perfect. So these are things that you may have forgotten. But, uh, but we'll, I'll be here to continue to remind you. All right, let's move on here. The hifil imperfect of the geminates. Uh, looking at savav as our example. I have ya save. Ya save. So there's my nutty prefix. I'm left with root one, root two, and three, but only uh, written one time. Okay. This is uh, the uh, the I class vowel, which is the theme vowel I'm looking for, but just not a Kyrick yod. So that's uh, um, the Hifil imperfect, 3ms. If I want to make it 3MP, I'm adding the Shurik, Ya Sebu, Ya Sebu. All the same things, but my vowel pointing is going to get that Dagesh Forte in the bet, Ya Sebu. When I want to add my consonantal ending, I get the helping vowel before it. And my Kamets Sere is going to undergo reduction because the Dagesh Forte is here, accent on the bet. This is closed and unaccented. It's got to become a short instead of a long vowel. That's why the Sere goes away. And this is open and propertonic and it reduces to a vocal Shiva. To Sabena. To Sabena. So that's uh, your uh, 3FP, 2FP. The WCI form, it would have been via save like this, right? I would have expected a sere here, via save, but notice that the accent retracts and goes to the prefix. And so that leaves this closed and unaccented, and that means it has to be short, and that's why I have a segol here, a short I class vowel instead of the sere long I class vowel that I was starting with. The imperative is he ha save. Hasev, uh, here, uh, in keeping with what I know about the strong verb in the hifil, I have a prefix he for my hifil imperative. Instead of the I class, I get an A class prefix vowel. Um, and I get an I class sere. So this is uh, this has all the right vowel classes for the hifil imperative. Hasev, uh, that's to tell one man to do this. Hasebu to tell group of men, second masculine plural, get my dagesh forte in the bet where I couldn't put it here. And then hasebena is telling a group of women. So it would have been ha se bena becomes hasebena because of the vowel reductions necessary. The uh, hifil participle has the prefix mem, which is characteristic. The one area here, and this was also true in the the hollows is that the prefix mem is not getting an a class vowel under it, it's rather getting a sere. So instead of ma save, it's may save. May save. Okay? Um, when I add the comments hey for the feminine singular participle, I get reduction to a vocal shiva because the stress moves way over here to the back. And so this is open, I'm sorry, this is closed and unaccented, it's pretonic. So the sere reduces to a kyric because the long vowel has to become short and a cuss syllable. And this is open and propertonic now and it goes to vocal shiva. So may save, masiba, masiba. The infinitive construct and the infinitive absolute for savav are the same, ha save and ha save. So no difference there. So the one thing that I'm hoping you're seeing is that in the geminate verbs, you never see the Kyrick Yod of the theme vowel for the Hifil. It's always going to be Sere or just a plain Kyrick in a closed syllable. 
All right. And then the final stem is the hofal. Remember the hofal makes the hifil meaning passive typically. But uh, what do we what do we see here? I get my characteristic prefix hey in the hofal perfect. I have a u class uh, prefix uh, consonant, and it's long. It's open and long. And then the a class theme vowel uh, for the hofal perfect, which is normal. Okay, but only two of the root letters are visible here. Hu sav for three ms. If I want to say uh, she, then I'm going to have hu sabba. My doggish forte now will drop in here. And uh, everything else will look the same as what I had in the 3MS form. Husav, husaba. And then if I want to add the consonantal ending, husabotha. Get your helping vowel, holom vav with the perfect uh, consonantal endings, dagish forte, and uh, the stress will move to the beth. Husabotha. And then for the 3, 3CP, husabu. Husabu. For the hofal imperfect, my nutty prefix will also take a U-class vowel, okay? But it can't be the short one. It's got to be the long one. And in this case, I get a, a, a shurik. u sav u sav And for 3MP, u sabu It's just the same form, but with the bet having its dagish forte in. And then the shurik, u sabu And then tu sabena for 3FP, 2FP. tu sabena I can't, um, I can't reduce this to uh, vocal shiva, even though it's open and propertonic. Why? Because shurik is historically long, and historically long vowels do not change, right? So that's why that hasn't changed. The na is a consonantal ending. That's why I have this helping vowel segel yod here. Okay. And then the last four forms that I have here, the hofal participle has the characteristic mem prefix with its u-class vowel, and then notice that I get a, a, a long a here. Under normal circumstances, nifal and hofal participles have an irreducibly long a, but in this case, when I add the comets a for the feminine singular form, dagish forte drops in, this becomes closed and unaccented, and I have to go to a short vowel. I cannot keep a long vowel there. So musaba. And then the infinitives are husav for the infinitive construct and husave for the infinitive absolute. The last thing I want to talk about from the Ross chapter is the fact that there are some irregularities with geminate verbs when we have gutturals involved. So if I have a guttural and it, it's... If I have a geminate verb and root two is a guttural, guess what? Root three is a guttural too because roots two and three are identical to each other. So you'll notice in, in this verb arar, that when we're dealing just with the cal of arar here, my roots two and three are resh. They're both in the guttural, uh, the guts gang. Okay, so that means to curse. And then the hifil of ra'a, and the cal this means to be evil. Uh, to be bad, to be displeasing, and the hifil to do evil. Okay, but notice that roots two and three are identical and they're both gutturals. Okay, so we've got problems here. What, what are going to be the problems? The problem is that when geminates monosyllabicize, the root two, root three letter will double. And we will typically see dagesh forte in that doubled root letter. However, we know that the guts gang will not allow a dagesh forte to drop in. And so that's going to be a problem. We have to rectify that. Also, we learned in Ross chapter 33 that when verbs end with a guttural, the stems that have a sere theme vowel will switch to a pathak when there's no inflectional ending. And we'll see some examples of that here in just a moment. Let's uh, use uh, savav as our uh, sort of our normal geminate verb, and we'll compare arar to it in the cow. And then we'll use savav in the hifil and compare ra'a to it. Okay, so what's the cal perfect going to look like for savav? Long a, short a. For arar, same thing. Long a, short a. When I'm following the normal pattern here, there isn't any difficulty. Savavu, the one thing that's a little different is that compound shiva. 
And here, Aruru, I'm getting the compound Shiva as well. That's actually not unusual because Resh, behaving like a guttural, you might see a compound Shiva under it from time to time anyway. Sabotha is the perfect to MS. Here I'm monosyllabicizing. This is going to collapse into one syllable. Uh, I get the helping vowel and the ta ending. Sabotha, Arotha is doing almost the exact same thing. But here's what I wanted to see. What I wanted to see, let me just uh, put this here. I wanted a pathak like the Samic has, and I wanted a doubling dot in that root letter, like the Beth has. Why is that doubling dot not there? Because Resh is in the Guts Gang, it rejects the Dagesh Forte, and when it does, the preceding short vowel will do what? That's right, it will compensatorily lengthen to a long A. And so that's what explains this form here, Arotha. Okay, now let's look at the uh, next little part here. For the imperfect of Savav, it's Yasov, and for the imperfect of Arar, it's Yaor. So remember, what I'm seeing is roots one and two and three, but they're only written one time, and no Dagesh Forte. Here, the Aleph is root one, Resh is roots two and three, but written only once. No Dagesh Forte there. Yaor. For the 3MP, Yasov becomes Yasobu. Dagesh Forte shows up here. Yaor becomes Yaoru. I wanted to see a Dagesh Forte here, but the Resh rejects it. Now, the Holum is already long, so I cannot compensatorily lengthen this because it wasn't tone short to begin with. So the holum is still holum uh, from what I saw, saw right above it, okay? So there's no lengthening that happens, but there is the rejection of the dagesh forte, ya oru. Okay, that's uh, arar, to curse. Now, uh, ra'a in the hifil, to do evil, let's compare that with savav in the hifil. So the hifil perfect, 3ms, hey save, sere sere, okay? Here, it should have been hey Ray, hey Ray, why do I not have a sere here? Because this guttural says to the sere that would have been before it, I like a class vowels, and so we get a pathak here. Okay, so hey save, hey Ray becomes hey Ra, so he did evil. Hey Seba, hey Seba for three fs, hey Ray ah, here the. Uh, ayan, the guttural, is not closing the syllable like it was here. So this problem of sere switching to pathak, this only happens if we have a closed syllable with that guttural and no inflectional ending. Since I have an inflectional ending, the olive is sliding over and going with this new vowel to create a new syllable, and so my sere gets to stay right where it is. Hey, rea. So this is not abnormal. This is the part that is. And then Hasibotha, Hasibotha, and Hareotha. This is almost the same. What's different is I expected here a Kyrick doubling dot, but the ayan says I don't take no Dagesh Forte from anyone, and so the short Kyrick has compensatorily lengthened to a Sere. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's in effect what's happened here. Let's take a look at the uh, imperfect. Uh, in the imperfect, uh, savav in the hifil is ya save, and in the uh, the guttural form of ra'a, it's ya ra. Here, the sere has been forced into a pathak due to this guttural in closing position. You will, on occasion, see the sere retained, but then a furtive pathak sneak in here. So ya ra or Yarea are both Hifil and perfect forms in the 3MS, uninflected uh, form there. Yasebu, 3MP, Yareu, 3MP. The only difference between these is that there should have been a Dagesh Forte in that ion, and Hebrew will not allow that Dagesh Forte to pop in. When it's rejected, the Sere is already long, so I can't lengthen it anymore. To Sebena for Savav, to Re'ena for Ra'a. Again, my difference here is that this is a Kyrick 
and a doggish forte, and I closed on accented syllable. I cannot put a doggish forte here, so this has to stay long compensatorily. The imperative, ha save for savav, and it should have been ha re with the sere, but again, the ayan has forced a uh, guttural, uh, that guttural has forced a pathak there. Ha sebu for 2MP imperative, ha reu because the ayan's not closing anymore, the sere that should have been there actually is. And there you go. All right, congratulations. We are now done with the, not just the geminate verb chapter, but with uh, all of the uh, varied and manifold weak verbs in the Hebrew verbal system.